And we welcome you to Baton Rouge on this Friday afternoon. I'm Victor Howell. Welcome to the Maravich Assembly Center. Game one of the Baton Rouge Regional has concluded with Middle Tennessee getting the win over Louisville 71-69. to We are joined by head coach Rick Ensel to my immediate left on the far end. We have Jalen Gregory star uh, joining us and then also Savannah Wheeler. Uh, coach, we will start, give you an opportunity for an opening comment. Then we will then go to questions for the players first, please. After coach's opening statement, we'll address the players so then we can then dismiss them back to the locker room and then we will go with questions uh, for coach. Coach, congratulations, and the microphone is yours. Thank you. Someone y yesterday asked me about our slow starts, and I said, I hope we didn't have one. Well, <laughs> we had one. Um, I thought they'd come out ready to play. I mean, I knew that Jeff was going to have them ready. I knew that he was going to use the last time they played us as motivation, and we tried to get that across to our players. And, uh, you know, we had some defensive assignments missed, and, and they hit some great they, – they made some great shots, took us to the basket, and – you know, the ball was falling for them. Yeah. We hung in there and got back at halftime. You know, I think we were down 11 at halftime, and we talked about, you know, cutting that in half by the end of the third quarter. And I think we ended up taking the lead by the end of the third quarter, so that put us right in it. So it was just a – basically it came down just to a, a guts of willpower from both teams who was going to will themselves to victory, and I'm awful proud of our young ladies. Coach, thank you. If you address questions for the players, we are streaming, so please raise your hand. We'll bring a microphone to you. If you'll introduce yourself, your affiliation, and then if you'll please address which player you are talking to. Uh, with that, let's open up the floor for questions for the players. Savannah, Sam Doughton, GoBlueRaiders.com. You seem to really take uh, Coach's halftime message to heart. You know, had 14 points in that third quarter. What changed for you coming out of the locker room at halftime? How were you able to find your shots during that stretch? Well, in the first, first half, you know, I missed a lot of easy baskets. I mean, I'm the first player of the game, I missed a layup. So, I mean, three or four layups I missed in the first half. So, I mean, yeah, at halftime, they just kept telling me, you know, I, I got to hit those. And going off what Coach said, that's something that we have a slow start in the first quarter. But, you know, I was just keep telling myself to stay aggressive, keep staying aggressive, and just keep playing within myself, and eventually one's going to fall. Jerry Lee Willard, Jr., the College Sports Report. Jalen, just talk about finishing in the fourth quarter when you were able to, it was, it was, seemed like it was your time. Yeah, it was just something that I have to do for my team. We each, we're a great team and we each have our nights and tonight just happened to be my night and then Savannah picked it up. But we know what it felt like last year when we got beat and we did not want to relive that moment. And so we really just pulled together and finished the game. Uh, Savannah, uh, Calvin White, MTSU sidelines. You guys outscored Louisville 44 to 31 in the second half. What kind of defensive adjustments did you make at halftime? I mean, really, I think. I mean, I thought our defense, um, our defense was pretty good. I thought in the first half, it's just we weren't hitting shots. I mean, if you look at our free throws, I mean, we got 23 for 33 from free throws. So if we would have made all of our free throws, you know, we went up. It's probably the worst free throw shooting we've had. This yeah, year. I mean, we. Probably beat them by close to 10, maybe, if we would hit those. But I mean, really, our def defense was still there in the first half. We just we just didn't hit. But you know, we're a team that we don't give up. We keep playing hard. We keep fighting. And you know, our crowd. I mean, our fan base. I mean, they traveled down here supporting us. And gotta credit them. So they definitely played a role into our momentum in, in the second half. Jalen, that you know, huddle right at the end of the first quarter, you're down, I think, 14, 16 at that point in time. What, what was the message that led you all to get a spark really quick and get on that quick scoring run? Honestly, it's a blur. But if I had to guess, <laughs> it was probably that we weren't going to lose the game. We had to step up and take control just like we have like this past year. And so it was probably just telling us to lock in. No. <laughs> uh, this is for Savannah and Jalen. Uh, this is Blake Spadar from WNBA Swish. Uh, what was what did the coach say to y'all at halftime when y'all were down 11 points? I mean, what were the basically years? just yeah. we got hit shots, but we had a lot of good open looks, and we just had to bury them. And then this one right here comes out like three for three, and I mean she she definitely got us going the first half, but. You know, once one starts clicking, eventually some others are going to start clicking, and I think that's just what really played a role in this. Any other questions for the players before we let them get back to the locker room? We're all good? 
Savannah, Jen, congratulations. Thank you for your time. We'll see you on Sunday. All right, we'll open up the floor for questions for, uh, for Coach. Same policy, please, if you'll introduce yourself since we're streaming. And uh, we'll open up for questions for Coach. Coach Ansel, it's been a while since we, we've seen each other. Yeah. Uh, but today was one of those days where things didn't go like you wanted to to start the game, but you had your halftime talk, and the second half being the ha second half. I don't think the halftime talk was anything except the fact that we just had to take care of business um, and I think I looked at all of them and said we're not losing you know we've got this thing cut to 11 let's cut it in half and go into the fourth quarter and take our chances and like I said fortunately we got the thing we took the lead at that point our crowd got in it I think our players then realized hey this is a ball game and we've been in a lot of close games this year we've won a lot of games about 26 27 points but we've been in some close games going into the fourth quarter we've been tied up about I don't know, maybe seven or eight, maybe even more than that games, and we would take it on out and win it by 21, 25, 26 points in the fourth quarter. So we knew the fourth quarter all year long has kind of been ours. And we came out, we did what we needed to do. We missed some free throws down the stretch. Um, Camille missed a couple of free throws. Uh, Jalen missed a free throw. Courtney missed two. We don't do that. We're a very, very, very good free throw shooting team, probably one of the best free throw shooting teams in the country. Now, it surprised me when I saw that uh, happening out there. Coach, it seemed like Louisville was really dominating the boards in the first quarter. That led to a lot of their early success. How did you all adjust to, to get more rebounds you know, the rest of the way? I don't know that we did adjust, Sam, to be honest with you, because uh, they're just a, we knew going in that we had to keep them off the boards, and they were just monsters on the boards. I mean, they, they've got some very athletic, uh, good – Good, a tall young ladies that can, has got great athleticism, and they just went in there and just got got the rebound, just muscled it in. And then uh, I thought early on, though, we we missed some defensive assignments. We gave them some straight line drives that we shouldn't have given up, and though, er, they converted every one of those. I think it was like four straight line drives they got in that first quarter. I'll go back and look at the film after a while, but I, but we got we can't have that. Rick, this is you guys' first NCAA tournament win since 2007. Although the, the net ranking probably would have got you here anyway, but do you feel like this win kind of validates that you guys belong? You know, it's, it's not like that we hadn't been trying to win. We've lost three of those games by one point. I think we lost to Michigan State. We led 39 minutes and 45 seconds. Against Mississippi State, I think we led 39 minutes and maybe 10 seconds. They beat us at the end of the game. And that, that was tough. So I'm just sitting here watching a lot of the young ladies that was on that team is texting us right now, and I'm sure they got tears in their eyes because we, we lost those games. We had total control of both of those games. And in the end, we ended up losing them. But this bunch right here, I'm telling you, they, they just got so much grit. They're not going to quit. They're not going to give up. Most teams would have quit out there tonight. I've seen that happen. I've seen it already happen in this tournament. Uh, you know, team get down 12, 14 points. Next thing you know, you're down 25. You, we'd went, we went to work there in the second quarter and scored, I think, five straight points when he called a timeout. And that kind of put us back in a good frame of mind coming to the bench. So you just touched on it. But um, I just wondered if and Brett Martell here with Associated Press, if you could put in perspective, I know you felt all confident all along you could come back. But, you know, you look on paper and, and an 11 seed is down by 18 to Louisville, which is a major program and a six seed. Um, and then you pull off the, not only the third largest comeback or tied for third largest in NCAA women's tournament history, but you'd come all the way back basically before the end of the third quarter. Um, can, you, can you just put that in perspective in your experience well, as a coach? That, the, if, if, you, if you're in our practice every day, everything we do is timed. I think some of you were there yesterday. So that kind of, get your mindset where it needs to be. Every drill, everything we do, running the floor, we got it timed. Well, when we got those five points back there in the second quarter, at that point I could see our, our whole body language, our whole demeanor changed with every player that we had. Courtney came back in. Uh, Courtney was, if you look, she's one of our better players. She's two for nine, one for six and three. That's unusual right there. But she got seven rebounds, seven points. Uh, then you got Nas that ended up, what, with 11 points and uh, 12 rebounds, double-double. 
You know, we hit the baskets when we had to hit them. I, I'm sorry if I missed your opening statement, but uh, I just thought on Wheeler, um, two points in the first half, 20 in the second. Can you help that explain? That does surprise me. She, that's why she's player of the year in our conference. That's why she's MVP of the conference tournament. That right there, because she's a scoring machine. And you know, just when you think you got her stop, she slides through and gets a three. The next thing you know, she hits another three. Then she hits a little two floater there. That's we've our fan base has seen her hit all year long. I knew when it left her hands, it was in, and they, I could see the look on their face. They were startled that she let it go right there because the big kid was all over the top of her. And I tell you, a, a, a large part of us winning the game was her big girl getting four fouls and having to go out. We made a big push when that happened. You know, they didn't have anybody else like her, and we didn't either. Coach, uh, y'all had, I mean, it was a big uh, defensive adjustment in the, in, the, in the third quarter. What was that big defensive adjustment that y'all made? Guys, we didn't have a whole lot of defensive adjustments, to be honest with you. We played it straight up just like we did at the beginning of the game. We were just getting over and covering. We were, we were picking up their sets. We didn't do a good job early. We did a good job late. Now, when they started making that pushback, that little guard got in there and hit about three floaters in a row. We didn't need that to happen, and that was a very poor job on our part for deep. Where I think we're up nine, she comes in, hits three floaters, and then we're up three. So, uh, you know, we got to do a better job than that. One more question for Coach here in the front. Coach, getting this far also speaks about your uh, conference, the conference that you all are in. Talk about how that, that playing in that conference and the conference tournament in CUSA uh, prepared you all for this season's uh, postseason run. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I hate to bring up these two programs, but we have got two programs in our conference that's been the Final Four, and one of them's won a national championship, maybe maybe more than one. So we're not, we got a pretty good conference, you know. And those La Tech, Western Kentucky, uh, you can just come right down the line. UTEP, they've all got good players and they've got good coaches. And uh, you know, from from the very beginning, first game in our conference uh, season. Uh, La Tech took us to overtime. We had to win a game in overtime. And then right at the end of the year, to finish this thing out for us to go undefeated, we had to play two of the toughest teams in our conference back to back. One of them was Liberty, the other was La Tech. And Liberty just come in our conference this year and you go look at the success they had in their, in the conference they were in. I think they dominated and won it year in and year out. So Conference USA is pretty pretty good uh, conference. I'll just tell you, and it's gonna get better. It's going to get better because we're bringing in Delaware. And, uh, you know, if we, we see another good program out there, our presidents, they'll be bringing them in. So, you know, we're not I'm, – I'm really proud to be Conference USA, to be honest with you. Thanks, Coach. Coach, appreciate your time. Again, congratulations. We'll see you on Sunday. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Louisville very will be – uh, Thank you all. We'll have Louisville head coach and a couple of players here in just a moment. Again, LSU and Rice set the tip off at 314. Louisville uh, coach and players will be here in just a moment.